Let's do it. Carlos Nelson with Cascade Media Group. And today we have one of the commissioners from Wichita, Kansas. And Oh, from uh, Unified Government, Wyandotte County, Kansas. Oh, Kansas. Oh, oh, no. All right. Let me start over. Let me get myself sure. here. Hold it. Because I'm showing you Wichita stuff. Because I don't know, you're showing me Kansas City stuff. Too. Yeah, no, uh -uh. <laughs> what I'm saying is, I uh got like I told you, these council people and all I got it mixed up. I thought you was from Wichita. No, sir, I think yeah. that's uh Councilman Johnson. I believe, all right, uh, so <laughs> uh, you, you should know Khadija Hardaway, Khadija, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 mm -hmm. yeah, right. So Khadija texted me this morning, uh, if you look at What's up, Kansas City? That menu, mm -hmm. you'll see Khadija. She has her own show. She be bringing people on from uh, off TV. Uh, okay, a, great. A, a, a bunch of people. David Haley. Mm -hmm. How well do you know him? Oh, I know David. <laughs> we served on some committees together. All right. Yeah, Call him. Yeah. David uh -huh. and me used to run around, whore around before he got where. He used to be Carol Cole's aide over. Mm. Yeah, I'm talking about in the 80s. Oh, wow. Okay, that's way yeah, before. <laughs> uh, right, right, right. 80s and the 90s. Uh, uh -huh. And uh, he was trying to run. I helped him over there in Kansas uh, passing mm -hmm. out stuff. So, here yeah. we go again. Carlos Nelson with Cascade Media Group. And today we have one of the commissioners from. KCK Unified Government. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, the brother got me uh, squared away. I had uh, opened up like he was from Wichita. Miss Nelson getting old, so no, no, nothing here? against Wichita. We <laughs> nothing against Wichita. But so who yes, do we sir. have here? Yes, uh, Andrew Davis. I have the honor and privilege of being the eighth district commissioner uh, for the Unified Government of Wyandotte County, Kansas City, Kansas. All right. Hey, Andrew, you know the drill. Let's go back to kindergarten. Tell our little audience about yourself so that they can be familiar with how you came up and all of that. And then we're going to go into your political. Great, great, great. Yeah. So my, my story is very uh, uh, unorthodox. I am not an original dot. Um, <laughs> as as we'll call it here in Wyandotte County. I'm actually from uh, Chicago on the west side of the city. That's where I spent the majority of my childhood. And um, I, I'll get to how I got to Wyandotte County, but I'll start you know, there. So um, yeah, I was born on uh, the west side of the city uh, in Chicago. And um, what really inspired me uh, in regards to public service was my parents. Um, my dad, at least growing up, my early childhood was a, a clergyman, he was a pastor, and we had this uh, interesting dynamic of having a Black pastor, uh, uh, him and my mom, right, this Black family, Black couple, leading a church on the west side of the city in the Austin a neighborhood, which at that time uh, had a large and, and really growing uh, Latino community. And so you had a black pastor, right, and and a black first lady leading a church that had uh, that was very multiracial, multi ethnic. And so uh, we had to have a Spanish service, and we had a Filipino service, and we had all of these different cultures, and uh, we were kind of this melting pot uh, on the west side of the city, which uh, for me was my early entryway into public service. And so um, moving forward. Um, my uh, uh, upbringing was a little interesting. So we uh, ended up losing our church uh, in the uh, late 2000s. And this was around uh, the Great Recession. And I had actually uh, lost my mom to breast cancer. And from there, a lot of moving around and stuff. I spent uh, my junior year uh, of high school in Arkansas. I spent my senior year of high school in Southern California. Uh, my dad had, had remarried uh, and, and um, currently still lives in, in California. And so um, during that time, it really taught me to be malleable and, and taught me to adjust to life because there were some really hard times where um, we dealt with unemployment, where, you know, and I had six siblings and uh, some other step siblings because my dad had remarried and we really fell on 
uh, hard times during that time, all while I was in high school. And so um, what got me to Kansas was the University of Kansas. Um, I graduated from high school out of, of California, and I wanted to be closer to Chicago because that's where the majority of my siblings were at. It was where uh, uh, our grandmas, where our aunts and uncles, it's where our cousins are at. And so I wanted to get closer uh, uh, back to Chicago and um, I went to the University of Kansas. I had always had an aptitude and just an interest in government. For me, a big uh, a confidence builder was uh, I was uh, in the uh, uh, AP or advanced placement uh, class for US politics and government. And these advanced college uh, courses were taken at the high school level. And if you do really, really well on the test, you can uh, get college credit, meaning you can save money because you don't have to take that class. I ended up getting a five, which is the highest score you can get on that particular test, which meant I saved money and I didn't have to uh, uh, go ahead and take that class when I went to college. Um, more than saving money, it was a confidence builder, right? And I feel like for everybody, whether you're an entrepreneur, doing radio or media or whatever, we all have those one or two or three moments where it's like, this is where I found out like, oh, I actually could be good at something, right? Um, I can actually kind of find my place in the world. And so um, I studied political science, religious studies, uh, and African-American studies while at the University of Kansas. But that's not really the most important thing here, uh, although that was the interest. What really brought me to Wyandotte County is my now wife, uh, who I met, uh, who uh, is, is originally from Wyandotte County and, and a proud Wyandotte County in. And so uh, we kind of typical college story, you meet, fall in love, we got married, and then we brought our, uh, uh, we brought our home now here in KCK uh, in 2020. And so my entry to Wyandotte County for, for some, they're like, you're still new and you just got here. Um, and it has been a crash course of learning about our community. Um, in 2021, uh, I, decided to run for office. I was working on a prior campaign and just felt like, you know what, I'm looking at kind of the landscape of things um, I should run. And the reason why I chose to run for office was because I was already studying, I was getting my master's in public administration and with an emphasis in local government. And so I was working in the city manager's office for the city of Lawrence. And during that time where I'm an intern, I have my studies, and now I said, I'm not doing enough. Let me just run for office. And so if, if you take kind of the, the landscape of what is happening in the year 2021, right? It seems like a long time ago, but I mean, we're in the middle of COVID. Um, our country is kind of having, in a sense, kind of this racial reckoning of sorts, or at least attempting to. And at the time, I just didn't feel like uh, as a young black man that my interest um, and the interest of, of folks like me were being well represented. And for Wyandotte County, we have no ethnic majority, meaning there's no, there's no race, there's no ethnicity that has 51%. And so we're about a little less than a third African-American. We have a growing uh, Latino community that ranges from kind of all over Central and South America. And then of course, uh, we do have our Caucasian community and then kind of that other, right? We have kind of a large Hmong community and other uh, Asian uh, communities and what have you. And so we're very diverse uh, for a community that's about 170,000 people. And why do I say that? Because Wyandotte County reminds me of my childhood in Chicago, right? Um, there's a lot, if you look at the, the the statistics of Chicago, it's kind of split a third, right? The mm -hmm. South side is African-American, the, the West side is kind of majority, right? You're, you're Latinx, you're Latino, and then the North side is white. And so there is this familiarity between kind of my hometown 
and kind of growing up and now a place that I'm proud to call home and pay property taxes and uh, uh, which is, is Wyandotte County. And so uh, that is kind of a brief synopsis of kind of my story, um, but uh, it has been a wild ride now being in my third year elected here uh, in Wyandotte County. All right. So uh, now let's get busy with you being a commissioner. Tell yes, our sir. audience a little bit about uh, what your responsibilities are and uh, when you uh, got elected, what platform was you running on? What was you telling the people you were going to do? And have you been able to accomplish any of those goals since you've been in office? Yeah, that's a really, really good question. So, or question. So I'll start with the first one. As a commissioner, uh, for those of you that are unaware, Wyandotte County, we are a unified government, which means our city and our county are merged. So I am both a city councilman and a county commissioner or county legislature, right? Um, that matters because we have some city a business, particularly when it comes to, let's say, our police department, fire department, they represent Kansas City, Kansas. But we have county uh, uh, um, budget. We have county uh, functions, such as um, our emergency management, such as our health department, right? So think of kind of height of COVID. Um, right when I got elected, we were making decisions on, do we have a mask mandate or not? I mean, those were some of the early votes that I had to make where it's like, they do not prepare you for this anywhere, right? And so uh, that's kind of the function where I'm voting on uh, budgets, I'm voting on uh, local laws, I'm voting on ordinances and things, uh, economic development projects, uh, um, and things of that nature that all come across my desk. And so um, those are things that uh, I do kind of on a regular basis as well as meet with constituents, hear their concerns and do my best to try to meet uh, whatever uh, those needs are. When I ran for office in 2021, and it's funny you bring this up because in my home office, I actually have the mailer <laughs> that I sent out uh, uh, back three years ago just to be like, okay, am I aligning? Um, there, there were themes that I committed to that um, I would say have either been accomplished or uh, are in the process of. One of them is hosting regular town hall meetings. Um, I'm proud to say I'm probably one of the few commissioners that have kept my promise every other quarter, in addition to attending meetings, and phone calls and all that stuff, I try to be very intentional and have one department come in and explain Here's how we work. Here's how we function. Here's how we're serving you. And then you tell us how we can serve you better. I've done that with economic development. I've done that with, um, I'm actually planning to do a similar one for parks so that we can have a conversation about the quality of our parks and how we're investing. Um, I've also done it for uh, other departments most recently last year with our public works department, where we talked about trash and recycling, which is a big issue here, as well as streets and road maintenance here, which is very costly, but those potholes, they make a difference, right? And so we've hosted regular town hall meetings. Another thing um, that I, um, ran on was really empowering neighborhoods with uh, solutions. Uh, what I mean by that is we have a large land bank inventory for unified government in which we have vacant lots that number by the thousands that currently are just sitting empty. We aren't collecting any money out of these vacant lots. And our, it is our job as the Land Bank Board of Trustees to convert those vacant lots into productive use. And so I'm currently spearheading an effort to revamp and renew our policy. We've been at this for about a year and a half to really see how can we make our land bank lots more accessible? How do we make wealth building tools so folks can build and do economic uh, economic development and residential development and what have you here in Wyandotte County. The last thing that I ran on um, that I believe I was able to deliver was a community, a community benefit package or ordinance. And so um, it, and when I ran, I'd said, create a process for community benefit agreements. What we have done recently, in recent, I mean, this is like December of 2023, is we passed a community benefit ordinance 
that transfers some of the fees from uh, developers when they receive incentives from the unified government into a fund that will uh, uh, provide funding for child care initiatives, uh, senior minor home repair, right, for seniors that need help, as well as a local affordable housing trust fund, because housing is such a major issue, not just here in Wyandotte County, but nationally. And so um, we're still working through what that looks like. We're still working through kind of how do we better that relationship between economic development, right, which can be in the millions of dollars to kind of local development and meeting local needs. And so um, those are the things that I've been uh, working on and things that I ran on that um, I'm happy to say there's been some progress. Let me say this. Uh, you remember uh, I spoke to you and said that I don't do research on anybody I bring. All right? Yeah. And so I never knew what this unified government really stood for. And I think sure. a lot of people didn't know that council and uh, county, that is what that really stands for, that you're serving two positions. And yes, you know, uh, information applied is power. Yes, sir. And when people don't have that type of information, they might just look at you as doing this one thing. So uh, you talked about the uh, Wondot, uh has had a really uh, Latino uh, community uh, that has been developing over the last quarter century over there or even longer but uh, how do you uh, relate to them specifically with some of their goals? Yeah that's a great question you know it's really important for me as an elected official right although yes I am African-American and I will not I'm proud of my heritage um, I'm proud of who I am and I'm proud to help our community advance because I believe that with our community advancing, we see all of America and all of Wyandotte County advance, but the issues um, depending upon communities uh, matter and how you respond to matter. When it comes to working with our uh, Latinx community or Latino community, um, I have heard issues regarding language access, right? If uh, mom or dad or grandma or grandpa do not speak English, um, there are questions regarding how do you get city services, right? How do you uh, um, do business, right? Uh, how do we explain uh, our ordinances and our local laws so that folks are able to understand what that means, right? A big one, and it's another, you know, some other work that I'm doing is we have a huge problem when it comes to pet ownership and dogs, and cats, kind of running loose. And that's a safety issue. That's a cleanliness issue. That's a, a, a blight issue. In some cases, it is a dumping issue, uh, depending upon the severity. And so explaining those uh, particular laws has been really, really important. Proud to say that in our website uh, for the unified government, uh, there's this little uh, 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 um, a portion where it's to the right, you can actually translate the entire website into some of the other languages that we see that are very prevalent in uh, Wyandotte County and Spanish is- That was my next question to ask you now, uh, yeah. the Asian community. Mm -hmm. The so, Asian community is growing across this nation. Yes, sir. Just yeah. like the Hispanic community. Yeah, yeah. So kind of same thing. What, what we're seeing is particularly with recently migrated communities here is, um, and, and I don't want to paint a broad brush, but I'll just see the trends that I'm seeing is access to services is huge. And then access and knowledge about opportunities for economic development is massive, right? I'm proud to say that because of the uh, immigration of different cultures, we are now seeing, for example, with the land bank, we're seeing different, different farming practices coming over to Wyandotte County that's coming from multiple places throughout the, the world, right? Uh, we are seeing uh, entrepreneurs come in and say, here's how we do business in our country. Uh, is this allowed here in Wyandotte County? And so whether it's farming practices, whether it's food, right? Um, I would say, and I don't know if you know this, but uh, we are the taco capital of, of the country. We are competing with Texas, Texas. What? All right. We have a taco well, you got trail. The, you got the Latin community for sure. They don't call yeah. 
Carlos, Don Pedro, Manuel, Martinez, Miguel, Perez, Don Juan for nothing. Yeah, you got to <laughs> come down to KCK and E and, and, and I would, I mean, that's just right, uh, our, our Latin community. We have really, really great uh, Asian cuisine here too, as well, whether if you want a sushi or if you're wanting, uh, thinking of the Tao Tao's, right, it's a Chinese restaurant um, that's been around for, for a while off of Minnesota, I mean, there is a, a, a lot of, of great cuisine and a, a growing community that's there. We have a large Hmong community as well that's very, very tight knit. They do uh, this large volleyball tournament deal. But you know we and got it's the just, sports it's amazing company. to see. I, say, I said, you know we got the sports company, Cascade Sports, that yeah. uh, when you let us know what's going on, we give them some. Yeah, money. for sure. We actually launched, uh, and it's actually one of our school districts, USD 500, that actually launched a uh, kind of a sports casting deal to uh, capture uh, high school games. And so, uh, yeah, after this call, I'll be more than happy yeah, to connect my, you and see how we can. Hey, my guy, party. Jerry Wilson over there, Wilson Pizza. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. See, we go back like 30 years. I used to own pizza restaurants when okay. Gary, uh, we, I sold him a lot of equipment and what have you. He's been doing a great job of representing mm -hmm. black business over yes, yes. Kansas and working with the neighborhoods and mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the youth. So mm -hmm. in closing, yeah, what would you have to say to your audience and your constituents? Yeah, I would say um, there's a lot of opportunity for us to build up Wyandotte County. And um, last year, we celebrated our 25th anniversary, uh, 25th anniversary of becoming a unified government. We weren't always a merger of city and county. And so we have the opportunity to chart a new territory and a new path for what our community looks like. And those opportunities come with economic development, right, which is kind of the heart of building up the tax base for your community. And so for Indian Springs, we have uh, uh, some real movement. It's about uh, over 50 acres of land that's owned by the UG that at one time it was a mall that uh, uh, today brings a lot of nostalgia to residents. Now we've heard from the community and by the end of April, we should have a proposal Right. I thought what? I seen the something future. in the paper about yeah. Indian Springs and them doing yes, some, making some major moves. We are. Yeah, we have three developers that are selected and it was very important for us that community engagement take place first, right? That we hear from folks. We had surveys and our staff did a phenomenal job of making sure that the community voice was, was front and center. And so we're telling those developers, hey, listen, if you're wanting incentives, show us you understand, show us you can deliver, show us that you can turn uh, this plot of land that was, you know, was at one time a place of joy and a place of, 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 of community. Uh, what does the future of this place look like after hearing from community members? And so I'm really excited about that. Uh, the Rock Island Bridge, which is supposed to open this summer, uh, this is, uh, uh, there's nothing like this in the world where it's this world destination bridge in which we are putting uh, basically a giant event space with local businesses and coffee shops and a trail and kayaking, all of that over uh, the, the, the Kansas and Missouri River. And so at the heart of the metro, uh, right by High V Arena, if you just go a little bit west, you'll see uh, this bridge that I think is truly going to transform, not just Wyandotte County, right, but it's that's going to the transform. Bridge. Listen, because uh, uh, City. Yeah. over there uh, where that church is, where the bridge is on top of the hill, mm -hmm. the Russians live. I had an apartment over in that area. At okay. Time, so I know they had good barbecue over there, uh, right around there. And every time I would be coming from Raytown trying to, that they've been working on that bridge for some time. Yeah, yeah, for the Rock Island Bridge, it has been a long time coming. Um, th this this discussion probably goes back to almost like the mid 2010s. I mean, we're talking a very long time. I want to say at least what this is on the third mayor, just to give kind of an idea of how long it's taking for us. Last to get to this but point. least, uh, how do you gel with your fellow commissioners? 
Yeah, I mean, like any other, so there's 11 of us, right? And we have eight districts, uh, 11 of us, including the mayor. So we have eight districts, right? And then we have two at large uh, seats and then we have the mayor. And I think like any other, you know, any other group of people that big from different areas, you agree on some things and you disagree on others, right? But I'm proud to say that we've been able to pass uh, uh, two budgets and within each budget that we've passed, we've tried to close uh, uh, our, our, our uh, uh, gap in financing and still meet services, whether it's reducing the mill levy or, or um, uh, uh, providing other financial relief, right? So that we can meet community expectations. Um, but there's been, you know, no surprise that there's been very public disagreements <laughs> on the direction of our community and, and the direction of where Wyandotte County is uh, going. So I'm happy to say that I, I can work with the majority of, of my colleagues. We do have three uh, new commissioners that were elected back in November. And so I'm still trying to learn their style and kind of how they operate. But um, we, we have been able to do some tremendous, tremendous things given uh, our circumstances. All right. Uh, I always have to bring this Negro into my picture. His name is James Lott. He's the uh, omnibusman for uh, the Black Archives of Mid-America. And okay. you were asking me about What's Up Kansas City. James Watts was a co-founder of What's Up Kansas City. And wow. I never did the interviews. He did all the interviews, but this is how he would close. I love this closing, so I steal it every time I close. His closing uh -huh. is, it was a plum pleasing pleasure having you on the show, Andrew. And I say, Watts, cut out all them niceties, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but it's yeah. been a pleasure i really appreciate the opportunity and would love for us to have further conversations uh i would love to uh, talk about all things wyandotte county and the great things we're doing here yeah but as we close when you invest in your community you're really just investing in yourself good day mm -hmm.